Hey there, it's Louie, and in this Amy Groomy crochet pattern, we're going to be crocheting a black footed ferret. These noodly creatures are well known for their little masks, the stripe of dark fur across their eyes, that make them a perfect companion for bank heists or a costume party. While their ferret population has grown in recent years, they are still endangered, and their low population has had an effect on the management of prairie dogs, their main source of food, as well as their some of their predators, such as owls, coyotes, and badgers. This pattern is not originally designed by me, however, but another Amy Groomy artist, Andrea Ferreira, aka at Lemon Yarn Creations. This is part of a huge collaboration project that me and four other Amy Groomy artists are doing to raise money for the World Wildlife Fund, a nonprofit that's mission is to conserve nature and reduce the most pressing threats to the diversity of life on Earth. Each designer made a different Amy Groomy party pattern for an endangered creature which you can see on screen now. These patterns are all donate to download. By donating using the link on screen or in the description below, you can get all of these patterns in the collection, each of which include a full video tutorial just like this one and an interactive PDF that has check marks to keep track of your progress and time codes to go along with the video tutorial. 100% of the proceeds for digital downloads will be donated to the World Wildlife Fund indefinitely. So even if you're seeing this pattern years later, you can still support the cause. You can learn more about how to support and find all the patterns and designers in this year's collection and previous years at clubcrochet.com slash earthday. And I'll be releasing a new video tutorial for one of these patterns every Friday over the next five weeks, as well as doing a live stream fundraiser the Sunday after. So make sure to like this video and subscribe down below so you don't miss out or donate to access the videos early and download the PDF versions of the patterns. Finally, please, please share your finished black footed ferret with me and at Lemon Yarn Creations by following and tagging us on social media and using the hashtag crochet for Earth Day. And make sure to check out all the other designers' social accounts too. They're all incredible artists that you definitely should be following if you're not already. Oh, and heads up, there is a left-handed video version of this that you can find in the description as well. And we're working on a Spanish language PDF for each of these right now, which should be available very, very soon. Also, you can quickly jump around in this video by using the time codes in the description or at the bar at the bottom of this video. Um, and I think that's about it. All right, well, without further ado, let's talk about the materials that you're going to need for this here pattern. For this pattern, you're going to need the following materials. I'm using all worsted weight yarn in 100% cotton. We're going to be using the colors black, off-white or ecru, and jute, or it's kind of like a tan. Um, if you don't have off-white, regular white would work perfectly fine. And then the same thing, if you don't have black, you can use warm brown instead of black as well uh, for an alternate uh, uh, color. Um, those will work completely fine. I'm using all worsted weight yarn, 100% cotton. It's my favorite yarn to use with Amy Gurumi, uh, but you can use any kind of style yarn you'd like. Uh, just make sure that the crochet hook works with whatever yarn you're using. Um, for my case, because I'm using worsted weight yarn, I'll be using a size G four millimeter crochet hook. Uh, yes. Okay. And you'll need a darning needle. Um, I'm using a crimped end darning needle like this. However, you're only really going to need the darning needle to sew on the nose here and to sew the tail closed. It, this is actually technically a no sew pattern. So the only things you really need to do is add a little bit of embroidery and uh, sew it closed. But the rest of this is actually made without any sewing whatsoever. So that's pretty cool. You'll need some safety eyes. I'm gonna be using size six millimeter safety eyes for this video. If you'd like to get a bottle of eyes like this, we have them available in the shop. Uh, and then you'll need some stuffing. You won't need very much, but you will need a little bit of stuffing as well. Uh, if you'd like to get a kit with all the materials that you see here, the exact same materials that I'm using in this video, we have kits available in the shop. Uh, you can find links for them in the description down below. Uh, and part of your proceeds for the kits will also go to the World Wildlife Fund. So it's a good way to help support this, uh, to help support wild animals, uh, specifically endangered animals, uh, and, you know, get the same kind of materials that we're going to be using in this pattern. Okay, well, without further ado, let's get hooking. We're going to start by crocheting the front legs. And again, before I get started, this design did not require any sewing of any pieces. The front legs and back legs are going to be made first. 
and then crochet directly onto the body. And then the head, body, and tail are all gonna be worked continuously. So you won't need to like, you're just gonna have to be changing colors throughout the parts of the head and body, uh, and some in the, in the arms. But the majority of this pattern, uh, there's not gonna be any sewing whatsoever. Okay, well, without further ado, let's get hooking and crochet us a black-footed ferret. Okay, so we're gonna start this pattern by making the front legs, and we're gonna start with a magic loop. Now, if you've never made the magic loop, I'm gonna give you a quick rundown right here. However, if you'd like a full video tutorial for how to do the magic loop, I'll put a link right here and in the description for a video where I show a few different kinds of magic loops that you can use and uh, the benefits to each one individually. But we're gonna start with our black yarn. I'm gonna hold down my yarn using my middle finger and thumb, like so, and then place the tail end in between my, uh, my ring and pinky finger there. And we're gonna go around the index finger and then back around my middle finger and then around my index finger again and around my middle finger again. But we wanna create an X on the front and two parallel lines on the back. See how they're both all lined up next to each other. Then we could take this end and place it in between our ring and pinky finger to hold it into place. And uh, you should have this bar over the bottom bar, by the way. Okay, now when you have all this lined up like so, you wanna turn it so that the back of your hand is facing you and take your crochet hook. We're gonna go under this first bar on our fingers and hook onto the second one and pull that one under the first and then loop it like so to make a little loop on the hook. Now we wanna go over that first bar and yarn over with the second bar right here. I like to use my index finger to help get guide the yarn over my crochet hook. Once it's on your crochet hook, you wanna take it and pull it through the loop that you made. It's easiest to do this with a real good scoop like this. That's the easiest way I find to make that. That's gonna create a chain stitch uh, and will keep your yarn locked in place so you can take it off of your fingers now. And that is how you're going to make a magic loop. Now, this magic loop is pretty cool. You can pull this tail end here and it'll close the magic loop up. And uh, yeah, it's, it's just a nice little thing. So we're gonna be working our first round of stitches into the center of this magic loop. Now, before I get going too much further, I'm gonna grab a little bit of additional yarn in a completely different color than our main colors so that we can use it to uh, keep track of where the ends of the rounds are. So I'm just gonna use a little bit of yarn here. Um, there's a lot of different ways you can keep track of ends of rounds, but I like using a, an, an additional thread of yarn because it's easiest for me. Okay, so for round one of the front legs, we're gonna start by doing six single crochets into the uh, magic loop. So for a single crochet, uh, all you have to do is go work into the magic loop. We're gonna go right into the center of the magic loop. Um, in For a single crochet, you'd be working into the stitch. In our case, because it's the magic loop, we're gonna, our stitch is gonna be the center of the magic loop. So we're gonna go into the stitch, yarn over with the end attached to the ball of yarn, pull it through the stitch, and then going over, yarn over with the end attached to the ball of yarn again, and pull it through two loops on the hook like so. And that's gonna be how to make a single crochet. The majority of this pattern is gonna be made with single crochets, so uh, get used to it. <laughs> so get used to it. So we're gonna do this first round by doing six single crochets into this magic loop. So we just did our first one there. Let's do a second magic or a second single crochet. We're gonna go into the center yarn over, pull it through the stitch, going over it, yarn over again, and pull through two loops on the hook, one and two, like that. There's our second single crochet. And if you look along the top here, you'll see these V stitches. It's kind of hard to see because it's in black yarn, but you'll see these little V stitches here, and they will indicate uh, where the single crochet is. So we have two done. Let's keep going. We're gonna go into the magic loop, yarn over and pull it through, Going over, yarn over, and pull through two. Again, we want six of these, and we've done three. Let's do another one. Into the stitch, yarn over and pull through. Over the stitch, yarn over and pull through two. There's four. Into the stitch, pull through. Over the stitch, pull through two. There's five. Let's do one more. Into the stitch and pull through. Over the stitch, pull through two. That's gonna be our six single crochets done. Now we can take this tail end and pull it nice and tight like that. And that will close up the magic loop and will be the end of round one. 
should have six single crochets around the magic loop. Now, if you want to count your stitches, pull your loop out like this. And if you look at the top of your stitches, you should see these V's. And if we count them back, you should have six of them. So if we count one, two, three, there's four, five, and six. This one's going to be our sixth one. For round two, we're going to be working into both loops of each of those stitches that you made in round one. This pattern is going to be made in the round, meaning we're going to keep working around in a spiral without turning. We actually don't need to turn for this entire pattern. So all we need to do is keep working in a spiral. So our first stitch is going to be the first single crochet that you made, which is going to be this one right here. Again, if you want to count back six stitches to find your first stitch and maybe get a darning needle prepped and go under those two front or those two loops simultaneously, just so you understand, uh, so you know where it's going to go. Now, before I get going into round two, let's grab our yarn for keeping track of the ends of the rounds. And I'm going to go straight through the center and thread that onto our needle. And we're just going to go right into the center with that end. And we're going to fold it over the end of our round like that. This is actually, eh, that's okay. We're going to need a long one a long stitch counter anyhow for later on in the pattern. So we're going to fold it over our piece like that and grab our tail end, attach the ball of yarn and grab our other tail end and get those prepared. Okay, we're just going to fold that over and that's going to help us keep track of where the ends of the rounds are. Okay, so now we're finally on to round two. For round two, we're just going to do a single crochet into each stitch around. So we're just going to find every single crochet that we made in our previous round and put another single crochet into that same stitch. For each of our stitches, we want to work into both loops. So we're going to go under both of these loops simultaneously, just like that. And we're going to yarn over with the end attached to the ball. Pull it through that loop like that. And then we're going to go over yarn over and pull through two loops on the hook. Before I do that, however, pull through to finish our first single crochet, we want to take this tail end and just place it in between the yarn on the hooks, the two loops on the hook and the end attached to the ball. And we're just going to crochet around it for a few of our first stitches, just so it gets locked into place so it doesn't accidentally open the bottom of our uh, piece up. So we're going to place it in between and finish our first single crochet around that tail end just to keep it in place. So that's going to be our first single crochet done. Let's do another one into the next stitch. If you look at the top of your stitch here, you should see both of the V's there, just like that. We're going to make sure we're under both of those loops. You can see how there's two loops there, one, two. We're going to make sure we're under both of those. Place our tail end over that so we have, can work around it. Yarn over with the end attached to the ball. Pull it through that next stitch. And then going over, yarn over again and pull through two for our second single crochet. It's gonna be two single crochets done. Now we can take this tail end, we can just let it float. We don't need to worry about it anymore. And we'll just keep doing our single crochets around. So let's go into the next stitch here. Both loops, yarn over, pull it through that stitch, going over, yarn over again, and pull through two loops for our third single crochet. So it's a single crochet in each stitch. There should be six stitches total into our next one here, yarn over and pull it through. Going over, yarn over again and pull through two. There's our fourth. This one next is going to be our fifth. Yarn over and pull it through. Going over, yarn over and pull through two. There's our fifth stitch. And then our final one right here, both loops. Make sure you're under both of them at the same time. Pull through, going over, yarn over and pull through two. It's going to be the end of round two. Rounds two, three, and four. So all three of these next rounds, well, two more rounds of just these single crochets. So all the rounds two, three, and four are all the exact same. We just do one single crochet and every stitch all the way around. So we've already done round two. Now we're on to round three. So we're just going to keep working around. I placed my stitch marker up and we're just going to skip the stitch marker and just keep working our single crochets around. So there's our first single crochet. There's two and we're on round three now. This is going to be our fourth single crochet. Here's our fifth single crochet. And wait, is that right? Let's see. One, two, three, four. I'm sorry. Next is our fifth single crochet. 
And then this one is going to be our last single crochet. You can see where our stitch marker is coming out of the next stitch to keep track of where the end of the round is. It's going to be the end of round three. We're going to pull our stitch marker up and continue on to round four. And round four is the exact same, just a single crochet and every stitch around. So we're going to start in our first one right here. Single crochet one. Here's our second single crochet. Third single crochet. And see how I'm holding it at the bottom of our foot here? It helps me easy, more easily aim where my crochet hook's going and find the stitches. Don't worry, see how the purple's poking through a little bit? Don't worry about that. We're just gonna pull that stitch marker out eventually anyhow. So just ignore it. And two more. It's gonna be our fifth single crochet here. And here is gonna be our sixth and final single crochet for round four. Okay. We'll place our stitch marker in place. We're still ignoring this tail end. We're gonna end up stuffing it into the foot in just a little bit, but we'll just keep it to the side for right now. Now we're on to round five. For round five, we're gonna do a single crochet into the first stitch, and then we're gonna do something called an increase stitch after that. An increase means two single crochets into the exact same stitch. That's all, that's all that an increase means. If you see increase two, that means you, two stitches in a row are gonna use an increase. So it'd be two, two single crochets in one stitch and then into the next stitch, another two single crochets. So that's all that increase means, it means two in the same stitch. At the end of this round, we're gonna do something called an invisible decrease, which I'll show you when we get to there. But essentially, for those uh, more experienced with crochet, an invisible decrease is working into the front loops of the next two stitches and doing a single crochet. But again, I'll show you that in just a second. So let's start by doing our first stitch. It's just gonna be a single crochet into the next stitch here. And again, we're on round five. So just one single crochet here. And then an increase into the stitch after that. So that means two single crochets into the same next stitch right here. We want two into the same stitch. Make sure we're working under both of those loops we'll do our first single crochet. And then we're gonna go right into that same exact spot right here and do a second single crochet into that same spot. Okay, so single crochet, increase one. And then we're gonna do two more single crochets and then our invisible decrease. So first let's do our two single crochets, one single crochet for each of the next two stitches. So there's one and two. And then our final two stitches here will have one invisible decrease worked into both of those final stitches. The important thing about the invisible decrease, here's how it's done. We're gonna go into the front loops only of the next two stitches. If you look at the top of your stitches right here, you're gonna see that's under both loops. Just like how we've been normally crocheting, we've been working under both loops at the same time. But in this next case, we wanna only work under the first loop, the front loop only of this stitch and this stitch at the same exact time. The best way to do that is, using your crochet hook, aim up from the bottom of the stitch just like this, and maybe use your nail to help like pry the front loop specifically over the stitch, or over the hook, and then poke your hook through that. So right now I'm only under one of the first front loops, and then reposition your crochet hook again to be under the next front loop like that, and do the same thing pry that stitch and make sure it's your crochet hook goes under it. And you can see there, I'm under two front loops at the same time. And then you just wanna yarn over and do a single crochet under these two front loops. It's kinda of hard to pull this first yarn over through the two loops. The best way I find to do it is really scoop it. So if you scoop it a lot, you won't accidentally pull through the wrong place. But once you've pulled through those two front loops, we can yarn over again and pull through the two loops on the hook for our, uh, to finish up our inv invisible decrease. And that's gonna be the end of round five. The reason we're doing an increase on half of it and then a decrease on the other half is it's kind of giving it a bit of, an, of a turn. So that's why we're doing that. We're kind of turning our piece as we're going. Okay, now we're gonna pull our stitch marker up there and we're gonna ignore it. And we are on to round six. For round six, we're gonna do two single crochets and then an increase. So in our previous round, round five, we did one single crochet and then our increase. 
This time we're going to do two single crochets and then our increase stitch after those two single crochets. And again, an increase means two single crochets in the same stitch. And then after that, we'll do one more single crochet and then our invisible decrease again. So we're doing uh, similar to round five, but uh, a few differences. So again, that's going to be two single crochets. So we're going to skip we're going to ignore our stitch marker, go into the next stitch, which is going to be right next to that stitch marker right here. We're going to make sure that we're under both loops. So there is under both loops at the same time. We're going to do single crochet into our first stitch. Here's our next stitch right here. We're going to make sure we're under both loops. And we're going to do a second single crochet, so two single crochets. And then into our third stitch right here. We're going to do an increase, meaning two single crochets into that same stitch. Pull through, going over, pull through once, and then we're going to go into the same stitch again and do another single crochet into that same stitch for our increase stitch. Okay, so we've done our increase. Next up, we want to do a single crochet into the next stitch right here under both loops again. So after the increase, we want to do one single crochet. And then into the next two stitches, we want to do one invisible decrease. Again, the invisible decrease, you want to go under the front loop only of the next two stitches. So here's the first front loop. We line up. We get our nail and help it pry under the second front loop there. And then we do a single crochet. And that's an invisible decrease. OK. That's going to be the end of round six. Now for our next round, round seven, we're just going to do a single crochet into each stitch around. However, we need to change colors to jute. Now, what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to undo that invisible decrease. We're just going to pull the, the last loop out just like that so that we have our two loops on the hook, but we haven't pulled through with our black yarn. And then we're going to change over to our jute yarn, um, AKA our tan color. So we're going to place this new end over our stitch, our last stitch of round six. We're going to place it in between the two loops on the hook and the end attached to the ball of yarn there. And then take your index finger of your non-dominant hand and go right in between the two loops like that. And take your index finger of your dominant hand and hold it down in place. And then we're going to take this and we're going to just fold it under like so. And then go over the black yarn yarn over with the jute yarn and pull it through the two loops on the hook and that will finish up round six actually and now we'll be using our jute yarn instead okay for our round seven again we're just going to do a single crochet into each stitch around but all in our jute color and we're going to pull our actually we don't need to actually pull our stitch marker up because the new round is going to be in jute so it'll be very clear where the end of this round is so we're going to go into the next stitch right here. Make sure you're under both loops. See how I'm under two loops? You can kind of see through that stitch a little bit. So there's two loops there. And we're just going to do single crochets in our jute yarn. So we're going to yarn over, pull through that stitch. Going over the stitch, yarn over and pull through two. So there's our first single crochet. There's going to be uh, six single crochets total one for every stitch around. So there's our second single crochet. And it's kind of nice switching over to this jute yarn because you can really see the stitches a lot better on the black yarn there. Okay, I think that's gonna be our fourth one. See, one, two, three, four. This will be our, uh, our fifth single crochet. And I'm just ignoring all three of these tail ends that are just kind of like sticking out the back there. This is going to be the last single crochet right here. Under both of those loops. And then yarn over and pull through two loops there. Now I'm going to pull my loop out a little bit to get prepared for our last round of our front leg. The first thing I want to do is pull out our stitch marker because the jute yarn will be enough of a signifier to know where the ends of the rounds are. So we can just pull this tail end out, pull this out, and we'll use this again when we get to our back legs. And then I also want to cut the black yarn that's attached to the ball. So that's going to be this one here. So we don't need that anymore, so I'm going to cut it nice and close at the bottom here. 
And then with these other ends, I'm just gonna stuff it into the foot. So I'm gonna use a, uh, a stick like this and I'm just gonna take our stick and we're just gonna use it to stuff these tail ends of our yarn back into the back into the arm. Just like that. There we go. Okay. Now the last thing we want to do is we're on to our final round. That's going to be round eight. And round eight is going to be kind of interesting um, if you haven't done this before. Basically what we're doing is we're going to flatten the opening of our piece here and we're going to work our next round through both layers so that it flattens up our piece and just makes it like nice and flat like that. Let me show you a finished version of this foot which you're going to see another one in just a second but you can see how it's flattened and then we crochet into both ends both sides at the same time and it makes this little flat piece. See? So I'll show you how to do that. The first thing we want to do is we want to chain one. So yarn over pull it through the loop to make a chain. And then we're gonna get our crochet hook. We're gonna go into the next stitch. That's gonna be right here. Make sure you're under both loops there. And then we're gonna go into the last stitch because we're gonna flatten our piece like this and we're gonna go into this very last stitch right there. If you're confused about which one it is, if you count over from where your crochet hook currently is in, it should be the sixth single crochet around. So if this is the first one where a crochet hook is coming out, that's one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's gonna be right into there. So we wanna get our crochet hook and go under that loop also. And then we can yarn over, pull it through both of those loops at the same time. And then I like to pull my yarn a little bit so that the two loops are more lined up or like have the right tension a little bit. And then going over, yarn over again and pull through both of those for a single crochet. And you see how that's working it flat and it's sewing it together kind of. Now we're gonna go into the next stitch and then the stitch across from it, which is gonna be right there. It's a lot easier to see what stitches across from it once you've started. Then yarn over, pull it through both of those, uh, both of those stitches, going over, yarn over again and pull through two. And the last one's gonna be right here it's going to be both of these simultaneously. It's actually easier to just go off the end right there so you can see where it's going through both sides. Yarn over, pull through, and then going over it, yarn over again, and pull through two. To finish the front leg up, we want to yarn over and chain one. Cut the yarn. You do not need a very long end at all because this is not going to be used for sewing even a little bit. So you can actually just, after doing that chain, pull it all the way through just like that. And that's gonna be how to make your front legs. You wanna make two of these front legs. You can see how those look there. Okay, now we can start working on the back legs. The back legs are gonna be made very similar to the front legs. We're just going to be doing, we're gonna start with our magic loop again, and it's gonna be all in black this time. So this time we don't need to change over to jute color at all. However, there will be a, some weird stitches later on when we get to round five and uh, round seven. We're gonna be doing increases and decreases to make more of a shaping, um, but it will be made very similar to the front legs. In fact, the first four rounds are the exact same. So I'm just gonna kinda go a little quicker here. Um, because you've already uh, assumed, I've, I'm assuming you've already made your two front legs. So you know these first four rounds pretty well now. I'm going to start with our magic loop. And we're going to do six single crochets into the center of the magic loop for round one. So I'm just going to go ahead and get that started. Six single crochets. And I'm going to go pretty quick since you, I've already just showed you how to do that. But if you do have any questions, uh, please feel free to ask me in the comments down below. Um, I would be more than happy to share, more than happy to help. And maybe someone else will be as well. We also have a Discord channel and a Facebook group if you need additional help too. I'm going to thread my um, purple yarn that I'm using as a stitch counter. We're gonna go straight through the center, fold it over, and we're gonna just ignore that as we go. There we go. And then just gonna fold it over, hold it down. 
And then we're also gonna grab our tail end and just hold it over the next stitch so that we work around it to keep it locked into place, just like how we did on the other leg. Okay, so for rounds two, three, and four, that's three rounds in a row for our back legs, we're going to do a single crochet into every stitch around. So that's six single crochets total for three rounds in a row. So let's do our second round here. We're just gonna do single crochet into every stitch around. I'm working around my tail end just for our first two stitches and then I can let it float off to the side with our stitch counter and just keep going around. It's gonna be three, four, two more. It's gonna be our fifth single crochet and this is gonna be our last single crochet. Six single crochets for round two. We're gonna keep going around. We can pull our stitch marker and fold it over and just ignore it. And we'll keep going around. We're on round three. It's another sing uh, six single crochets, one for every stitch around. And if you haven't yet, please consider liking and subscribing down below. It does help this channel quite a lot. Um, so yeah, please like and subscribe if you haven't already. And also, Check out at Lemon Yarn Creations on Instagram. That's the designer of this black footed ferret pattern, and she is so cool. Um, Andrea is the best. Uh, she did our, she helped make the um, red panda last year for our Earth Day crochet along. And so I was really excited that she decided to uh, work with us again and do another pattern for, the, for our Earth Day. All right, so now I'm on to round four. We're going to just fold our yarn over and we're just continually single crocheting around for round four it's just another six single crochets one for every stitch around but yeah andrea's uh instagram is at lemon yarn creations and she makes some seriously crazy looking stuff over there it's really cool she's a very talented amigurumi artist um as as are all the artists in our um in our collaboration here i'm really happy with uh with what we've got to show you this year for our Earth Day crochet along. Okay, it's gonna be five, and this will be our last stitch right here. And I'm working under both loops for all the stitches, as you should be. We can pull our stitch marker up. And actually, before I continue on, I'm gonna go ahead of schedule here, and I'm just gonna stuff in because this little tail end is kind of being annoying, so I'm gonna stuff that in a little bit. And then I'm also gonna start stuffing our other tail end in, our black tail end, just so we can ignore it and it's not always just sticking out the top of our piece. So I'm just making sure it's all in there. I'm keeping our stitch marker out, however. Almost done. There we go. It was just bugging me, so I just wanted to stuff it into the end of that foot so that we don't have to worry about it getting getting pulled through the wrong stitches and stuff like that. Okay, so stitch marker pulled up. Now we're on to round uh, five. For round five, we're gonna do something a little bit different. We're gonna do two single crochets and then two increases and then finish up with two more single crochets. Um, each increase is going to be two single crochets in the same stitch. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to start by doing two single crochets. So one single crochet for the next two stitches is what that means. So here's our first single crochet. And then our second single crochet is going to be here. Okay, so there's our two single crochets. And then we want to do two increases in a row. So that means two single crochets for each of the next two stitches. So here's our first increase one single crochet and then into the same exact stitch there's our second single crochet and the end of our first increase and then our second increase is going to be in the next stitch here and we'll do there's one single crochet and then into the same stitch our second single crochet and the end of our second increase okay and then to finish up round five we just need one single crochet into the next two stitches so there's one and two. All right, that's gonna be the end of round five. 
You should have eight single crochets around now because you did two increases and each increase adds one more single crochet to the round. So again, if you want to count around, you should have eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. Now we're on to round uh, six. For round six, nice and easy, we're just going to do a single crochet into every stitch around. So we're going to skip our stitch marker and we're just going to do a single crochet all the way around. That's going to be eight single crochets total working around every stitch in the piece. Two, three, four, halfway there. Five, make sure you're working under both loops. Six. Oopsies, there we go. It's going to be seven. And then our last one is going to be right here. That is our eighth and final single crochet for round six. Okay, now we're going to fold our stitch marker up. Now we're on to round seven. For round seven, we're going to do two single crochets and then an invisible decrease. And we're going to repeat that two times total. So that means two single crochets, invisible decrease, and then two single crochets and another invisible decrease. This is going to bring you down from eight stitches back down to six, uh, six stitches around. So let's go ahead and get that started. We're going to start by doing our two single crochets. One. And. Two. And then our invisible decrease. So again, our invisible decrease, we're working up from the bottom. We're going to go front loop only and then find our way around to the next front loop only. And then a single crochet once you're under both of those front loops. Yarn over, pull it through. Make sure to do a scoop so that you don't accidentally pull through the wrong piece. And then yarn over again and pull through two. There's our, there's our first repeat. So that's two single crochets, invisible decrease. Let's do our second repeat. Single crochet, two, one, two, and then invisible decrease. Front loop, front loop, single crochet. Okay, that's gonna be the end of round seven. Now, before we continue on, we wanna do one more single crochet into the next stitch uh, before we get to round eight. So that's gonna be this stitch right here. And this is just gonna help line us up a little bit better. So just one single crochet there, and I'm not gonna work around our stitch marker um, because we are actually on our last round. For our final round, round eight, we're going to do the same thing that we did on our previous, on our front legs. We're gonna fold it in half, and we're gonna work into both sides simultaneously to sew it closed with our last round of stitches. Let's start by chaining one, and then working into the next stitch right here, and into the final stitch in the round, what is directly across from it when you fold it in half, that's gonna be right there. See, so it's working all the way across. We're just gonna do a single crochet into, into that stitch and all of these folded in half stitches. So there's our first one, yarn over, and pull it through both stitches at the same time. Then going over, yarn over again, and pull through two. There's one, here's our next stitch, Go under both stitches at the same time. Yarn over again and pull through. Going over, yarn over and pull through two. There's our second single crochet. And then our last one, again, it's easiest to kind of go on the outside like that and then do our single crochet. There's our three single crochets worked flat to sew it closed. And then we finish up by yarning over, chain one, Cut the yarn, you don't need a very long end at all, and just pull it all the way through. And that is gonna be how to make your back legs. You wanna make two of these, and now I can just pull our stitch marker all the way out, and we're gonna use this again when we get to, uh, when we start our body to keep track of um, where we're at on the body. Okay, so we can place this to the side. We've got our front legs and our back legs done. Don't forget, you wanna make two of each of these. And uh, let's get started on our head. Okay, so to start our head, we're going to start with our Ecru yarn, aka Off-White. Again, if you don't have Off-White, a full white will work just perfectly fine. And we're going to start with our Magic Loop, just like how we started with our feet. And in fact, actually, round one 
and two of our head are gonna be worked exactly the same as we do for the feet. So let's go ahead and pull that stitch marker a little bit close, I mean, pull the loop a little bit more. And we're gonna start with round one. We're gonna do six single crochets into the magic loop, just like how we did on the feet. So that's just six single crochets all the way around. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Pull it a nice tight on the bottom there. And we can take our stitch marker. I'm actually just gonna use my crochet hook this time, going out from the center, yarn over with our stitch marker and just pull it through that center. Like that. Pull it tighter. And I'm just gonna fold our stitch marker over Make sure there's only a little bit of a tail end there. We're gonna work around it for each of the ends of the rounds to keep track of our end. And then I'm also gonna pull this tail end a little bit of our uh, ecru yarn just to keep it, um, to tighten it up a little bit. Okay, and that's gonna be the end of round one for the head. For round two, we're just gonna do a single crochet into each stitch around, just like how we did with the legs. Um, make sure you're under both loops of all the stitches. So here's our first stitch right there. Make sure that you're under both of those loops at the same time. I'm gonna work around our tail end for our first stitch just so it's hidden in the piece and it doesn't come uh, open. And we're just gonna do single crochet for each stitch around. So there's one and two. After you do your first two stitches, we can let our tail end float and then just keep going around. There's three. four, five, here's our last stitch right here. Oopsies, there we go, six. Okay, and that's gonna be the end of round two. There should be six single crochets still. And we'll just pull this uh, stitch marker up. I'm gonna cut our tail end here a little shorter just to help it um, so we don't accidentally work around this. And we're gonna use this to stuff up our piece a little later. Um, make sure you save your tail ends to stuff uh, your piece closed. It just helps to uh, eliminate waste, um, which is obviously really important uh, when we're trying to keep our planet clean. All right, so we're gonna fold over our stitch marker and we're on to round three. For round three, we're gonna do a single crochet into our first stitch and then an increase into our next stitch. And then we're gonna repeat that same process three times total. So that means single crochet, increase, single crochet, increase, single crochet, and increase. That's gonna bring you up from six stitches up to nine stitches around. So you should have nine stitches at the end of round three here. So let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna skip, uh, we're gonna hide our stitch marker, fold it over, go into our next stitch right here and start with a single crochet into that stitch. And then the stitch after that, we're gonna do an increase. So that means two into the same stitch. Here's our second single crochet for our first increase. Single crochet one, increase one. And we wanna do that three times in a row. So let's do our second repeat, single crochet one, and then increase one. Uh, one single crochet and two into the same stitch. And then one more repeat, single crochet one, and then increase one. One and two. Okay. Pull our stitch marker up. Like that. And now we're on to round four. For round four, we're gonna be using our black yarn again, so I'm gonna go ahead and get that prepared. And in the pattern, oops, I keep dropping it. There we go. In the pattern, um, you will, if, you, if you're reading the written version of the pattern, um, there's gonna be underlined stitches. Uh, underlined stitches mean that those stitches are black for, the, uh, for rounds um, four and five. So for their next two rounds, we're gonna be using black and switching colors so that you can make our 
little face mask here. So we're basically making our face mask there. And I'll obviously be explaining when we change colors, but if you are reading along in the written version of the pattern, um, because you've donated, uh, you'll see that certain stitches are underlined and that means that they are uh, made in black yarn. Okay, so for round four, we're gonna start by doing two single crochets in our off-white accrue. So that's one, and here's our second single crochet. And we're gonna pull through, but we're gonna leave these two loops on the hook and leave that one, um, uh, leave it open like this because we're gonna change over to our black yarn now. We'll place it in between the two loops on the hook and the end attached to the ball. Hold down with your index finger like so. And we're going to fold it under, yarn over with our black yarn and pull it, oops. There we go. Pull it through the two loops to change to black. Pull it tight there. We're just going to actually float our white yarn. So we're just going to, that means that we're just going to pull our off white to the side. We're just going to ignore it completely. Just pretend it's not there until we need to change colors again. And that way it won't, um, we won't actually be crocheting around this, uh, the white yarn so that you won't see your stitches through. You won't see the white yarn through the black yarn, which is pretty important when you're doing color changes with uh, con very contrasting colors like black and white. All right, so now uh, we've done our two single crochets in ecru. Now we want to do one single crochet in black and then three increases. So an increase into the next three stitches in black. So here's the first stitch. And remember, a single crochet or an increase means two single crochets into the same stitch. So that's one single crochet, and then there's our increase. You can see how it's kind of like two in the same stitch there. So there's our first increase. Let's do our next increase right here. It's gonna be one, two. And then our third increase is gonna be right here. One and two in the same stitch. So that's single crochet, increase, increase, increase. And then we're gonna do one more single crochet here, but we're gonna change to off-white after that. So I'm gonna hold it so that there's two loops on the end, on the hook, and then one, and then just the end, attach the balls, let loose. Then we're gonna take our um, ecru yarn here that's been floating. We're just gonna kind of like, like place it along the outside so that it has enough, um, enough looseness to it so that we don't accidentally like make it really tight. Hold it down with your index finger and of your dominant hand, that is. And then with your non-dominant index finger, go in between the two colors and fold it over or under, fold the white under the black like that so that the white is over it. Yarn over with the white and pull it through the two loops on the hook like that. We're going to pull the black yarn a little tighter and uh, we're going to continue in uh, are off white uh, for the next few stitches. Now we're going to let the black yarn float because we're going to be changing back over to the black yarn in a little bit. But to finish up this round, we just want two more single crochets in our off white. So there's one and two, and that's going to be the end of round four. You should now have 12 stitches around. So if you want to count your stitches at the top, there should be 12 around. And you can see how our round is kind of changing back and forth to make a little mask. Okay, let's pull our stitch marker up like that and continue on to round five. For round five, we're gonna do two single crochets in off-white and then eight single crochets in black. I'm kind of just hiding this black tail end that's annoying me in there. So two in off-white, eight in black, and then two more in off-white. So that means we can just uh, ignore the tail end here, go into the next two stitches, and just do a single crochet. So it's basically a single crochet in every stitch, but we want two in off-white. Then we can take our black yarn that's been floating, place it in between the two, hold it down with our index finger of our dominant hand, and then non-dominant index finger in between the two, fold it under, yarn over with black, and pull through two with black. One, two. We'll pull that a little tighter. I'm gonna let the white off-white yarn float. And we want eight single crochets in this black. So that's one, two, three, four, five, 
six, seven, and then this is gonna be our eighth single crochet. And we wanna take our off white yarn and do the same thing where we're like letting it go in between all the stitches, holding it down with our index finger of our dominant hand, non-dominant index finger in between the two colors, switch over to off white, yarn over the off white and pull it through the two loops to finish up or to change over to our off white yarn there. And now to finish up round five, we want two single crochets in off white. Our first single crochet of those two, we can work around this black yarn because we're gonna cut it. So we can work just around that black yarn like that for our first single crochet and then cut it nice and close. We won't need it again for a while until basically uh, we get to the end of our piece. Uh, we will need it to make a little nose later, but yeah, we'll get to that. Um, so we want two in off-white. So there's our first one. We worked around the black. And here's our second single crochet to finish up round five. And we can fold our stitch marker up. And uh, yeah, now we're on to uh, continuing along. For rounds six and seven, uh, our next two rounds, it's all going to be in our off-white color. So we don't need to change colors for a couple of rounds. But then after that, we're going to use jute yarn and do color changes and stuff like that. Okay, so... Round six, um, round six is kind of interesting. It's gonna be doing, um, making our piece increasing up a little bit. Again, uh, if you finished round five there, you, sh you should still only have 12 stitches around, but in round six here, we're gonna increase, again, increase it up a bit. So to do that, we're gonna start by single crocheting one into the next stitch, and then increasing one after that. So single crochet one, increase one, meaning two single crochets in the same stitch. So there's one and two and we're going to repeat that process three times so single crochet one increase one repeated three times let's do our second repeat because that was our first single crochet one and then increase one one and two my black yarn is creeping up there let's go ahead and pull it out okay so there's our second repeat let's do one more repeat of that single crochet one and then increase one, one and two. Okay, there's uh, the third repeat done. Now we wanna do the opposite um, to get to the end of the round. So in this time, now we wanna do an increase and then a single crochet repeated three times around. So that means we're gonna do an increase into the next stitch. So two single crochets, one and two. And you can see how that lines up right in the center of our piece. So increase one and then single crochet one. Repeated three times around. So there's our first repeat. Let's do our second repeat. Increase one, one, two, and then single crochet one. And then one more repeat of that. Increase one, one, two, and then single crochet one. Into the next. Okay, you can see how our face is coming together there. All right, and that's going to be the end of round six. You should have 18 stitches around now. We pull our stitch marker up like that and just keep working around. So next, uh, we're on round seven. For round seven, nice and easy. We get kind of a nice little break. A single crochet into every stitch around, and there should be 18 stitches around. So that means it's just a nice break of just single crochets all the way around. And this is a great opportunity for you to count your stitches if you haven't been counting your stitches and make sure that you are at exactly 18 stitches around at the end of this round. Okay. And again, uh, here's my plea if you haven't yet, um, like and subscribe down below. It does help our channel get uh, pushed uh, up in the ratings a little bit and get seen by more people which especially for a, um, a fundraiser like this is really important. So please like and subscribe. All right, so that's gonna be the end of our round seven and our single crochets. For our next round, round eight, we're gonna be using our jute yarn and we're gonna be changing back and forth between ecru and jute. So we're gonna go ahead and get that prepared. Let's get our yarn ready here. I had to crack my knuckle too, because I, I just had to crack my knuckle. Um, all right, so we're going to get our yarn prepared. We're just going to have it like sitting there. Um, we'll have our ferret holding it in place as we go. 
pull our stitch marker up there. And uh, for round eight, we're going to start by doing five single crochets in our ecru yarn, and then we're going to change to jute after that. Um, so first do our five single crochets in ecru. One, two, three, four. This is going to be our fifth. Now I'm going to keep two loops on the hook and one attached to the end there. And we're going to take our jute yarn. Thank you for holding our yarn in place, Mr. Ferret. And we're going to place it in between the two loops on the hook and the end attached to the ball. Hold it down with our index finger and then switch over, yarn over, and pull through with our jute yarn. Now because our, uh, well, yeah, because we're going to change back to our ecru soon, well, I guess we can float it. Let's try floating it and see how it goes. So we're going to let our yarn float, which means we're just going to pull our off-white yarn to the side and just continue on in our in our jute. And in our jute yarn, we want to start by doing a single crochet into the first stitch right here, just one single crochet to get started. And then we're going to work into the front loop only, and we're going to do three half double crochets in a row. So right now we're making our little ears here. See? So... uh. If you look at the top of your stitches, you do know you should know the front loops only because of our invisible decreases. But just to repeat, um, this is under both loops, and this is under only the front loop. So only under this front loop here, we want to do three half double crochets in a row. For a half double crochet, we yarn over, and then we're going to go into our stitch. Again, in this case, it's front loop only. Yarn over again, pull through that front loop, Yarn over again and pull through all three loops on the hook. So there should be three on the hook. Pull through all of them. The best way to make sure you get through under all of them is really scoop it like that. Okay, so there's our first half double crochet. We want three of those into the exact same stitch. So yarn over again into the same exact stitch. Yarn over and pull through. Yarn over. Pull through three. One, two, three. One more. Yarn over into the same exact stitch. You can see it really getting pulled open there. Yarn over and pull through. Going over, yarn over, and pull through all three. One, two, three. Just like that. Okay. Now we're gonna do five single crochets. We can work under both loops now to get to the next ear. So just five single crochets. One, two. Get a little bit more yarn there three, four, this will be our fifth single crochet. See how our ears sticking up there. Now we're going to do our second ear right here after doing our five single crochets. One, two, three, four, five, just make it sure. And we want it to be under that front loop only again of the next stitch right here, three half double crochets. So yarn over into the next stitch right here, front loop only. Yarn over and pull through. Going over the stitch, yarn over and pull through all three. One, two, three. So there's one, two, and three into the same stitch. Okay. Next, we're going to do one single crochet into the next stitch right here. And we're going to change back to our off white after doing that. So we can have this yarn. This is going to be a pretty far float. Um, it, I wouldn't, I might say cut it normally, but you know what? It's fun to try new things. Let's, uh, let's try to let it float that far. Um, usually though, I do cut it after that far across. But we'll hold it into place right there. We're going to switch over, yarn over with our ecru and pull through the two loops there. Okay, we have a pretty long float there. I'm going to pull my jute yarn a little tighter, keep it in place. We'll pull our off-white just a little bit, not too much. That's pretty good. Okay, and now to finish up round eight here, you want to do a single crochet into the last four stitches to get to the end of the round, all in our off-white. I am going to work around our jute yarn just for our first single crochet, and I'll explain why. Um, the reason I work around it the jute yarn here rather than, I, and I didn't really do that up here, is because the jute doesn't really show through the off-white as much, so it's not much of a problem. So sometimes I like to just work around it. And we're going to let our 
our uh, jute yarn float for a bit because we're going to come back to it over here. We're just going to continue. There's one, two. There's our third single crochet, and here's our fourth single crochet. We can pull our stitch marker up, and that will be the end of round eight. Okay. Round eight, round eight can be a little tricky, but that's where we should look like. Okay, so now we're on to round nine. For round nine, we're going to do four single crochets in our off-white. And then we're going to do a switch over to our jute yarn, and we're going to start with an invisible decrease right here. So let's start by doing four single crochets in off-white. One, two, three, and here is four. And I'm going to keep the two loops on the hook, take our floating uh, jute, place it in between the two, and switch over to jute yarn and pull through the two loops with jute. We're going to let our off-white float again. Okay, so now that you've changed over to our jute yarn, we're going to start by doing an invisible decrease into the next two stitches. The nice thing here is that they're two different colors, which is kind of fun. So you're going to go under front loops of both of these next two stitches. So there's first front loop and second front loop. See, so we got two front loops in a row. And then we're going to yarn over with our jute yarn, pull through, yarn over going over it, and pull through two. Okay, so that's our first stitch, an invisible decrease in our um, jute yarn. For our next stitch, we want to work into the unused back loop only that you didn't work into for our ear. So if you fold it over, see how you can see this loop right here. That's where we're going to work a single crochet into that unused front uh, back loop only. So we're going to go into that back loop only and yarn over with our jute yarn. Get our ecru a little bit more out of the way. And we're just going to do a single crochet in that yarn like there. Okay? All right. Now we can uh, continue working around. Uh, after doing that back loop uh, single crochet, we're going to do a single crochet into the next stitch under both loops. That's going to be right here. So we're going to ignore this ear here, find our next single crochet, which is going to be this one, work under both loops, and do a single crochet into that stitch. We can pull our ear up a little bit, maybe point it out a little bit more. Okay, so after doing that single crochet into uh, both loops, we can do an invisible decrease. So going front loop, and then front loop, and then doing our single crochet in our jute yarn. And then we want two more single crochets into both loops, one, and two, and then here's our next ear again, and we want to do the same thing that we did with this ear. Fold it over, find that unused back loop only right here, and do a single crochet. Okay. And then fi uh, finally, before we change back to our ecru yarn, uh, this part can be a little weird, but we want to do another invisible decrease into the next two stitches. That's going to be this front loop and this front loop at the same time, which can be kind of hard with your crochet hook all the way over here. The thing that I like to do is pull our loop out so that you have more movement of your crochet hook. Then take your crochet hook, get under the two front loops, and then pull your yarn tight again to re-tighten that uh, loop, and then do your single crochet under those. Now before I pull through, we want to change back over to our off-white yarn so we can let that float, come back over, place it in between the two, and switch over, pull yarn over, and pull through with our ecru yarn to finish that invisible decrease and change colors back to our ecru yarn. Okay, and we have this long float on the inside. Um, we, can, we can probably just let it set down there. Okay. And uh, let's we'll work around this jute for our next stitch, but for the end of round nine, we want to just do three single crochets, one into the next three stitches all the way around. It's going to be one. We could just work around the jute for the first one, let it sit there. We're going to come back to it into our next round. But let's keep going around. There's one, two, and three. Okay. 
that's going to be the end of round nine. You can see how our piece is coming together. Okay, now I'm going to pull my loop out pretty far. And uh, before we get to round 10, uh, which is going to be the last round that we're going to need to use our ecru yarn with, um, but before we get to there, we want to add the eyes and sew on a nose. Let's start with our eyes. We're going to get our bottle eyes here again in the shop if you're interested. We got 8 millimeter, 6 millimeter, and 10 millimeter eyes if you would like to get a little bottle. It comes with, I think it comes with like 100 or 50. I'm not sure. I think it depends on the size of eyes for how much fits in there. So we're going to get our two eyes. I'm using 6 millimeter eyes here. And we're going to place the safety eyes in between these rounds of black yarn. That's going to be rounds four and five per, uh, here. And the placement that I like to do is right after our first black stitch is going to be our first eye. So right here is going to be our first eye. And then our second eye is going to be on the opposite side. I think it's right here. It's actually going to be right before the end of our piece too. Okay, so once you have those eyes in there, we can take our locking mechanism on the inside and just place it over the eyeball thing and then just lock it in place. If you want to try some fancy stuff for your eyes, um, check out our video for how to customize eyes. There's a few different ways that we custom you can customize your eyes by adding like white around the outside and stuff like that. Um, in fact, if you want to try something out, uh, check out our dugong pattern or our taper pattern for this Earth Day crochet along, and you'll see a, a way that we use white felt around the eyes to add like, to add like a little bit of, um, here, I'll show you it on the taper here. So you can add white around the outside of the eyes by using some white felt. Just an idea. Um, check out that taper pattern a little later. Okay. Next, we want to sew on the nose. Before I sew on the nose, though, we want to get our stitch marker out of the way so that we don't accidentally use it as we're working around that. So I'm going to just pull our stitch marker out for a few rounds. We can pull it like that, just have it kind of sitting there. And then we're going to need some black yarn. We won't need very much. Maybe about like, yeah, about like that much. And when I made my nose over here, I did kind of like a little snout on it. And then I sewed around the outside of the stitches there. Um, you don't really need to do the snout. If you don't want to, you can just work those ends around. But I'll show you how I made it. Okay, so we're going to thread our black yarn onto a needle. And I'm going to come out from the inside straight out through the very center. Like that. And then I'm going to just go up a stitch right here and then out a stitch over to the left. And we can pull our yarn out just a little bit more. We just need to use this to double it, double knot it. We place it like that. And now we want to go over one, two over and back around like that. And we're just going to go around that a few, a few times. Not too many times, maybe like three or four times. One. Um, you can go even further over if you want. You can go all the way over to here. Um, that actually might... Let's see, what did I do on this one? No, I, I, did it, I did it through the stitch that we're currently working into, but you could go all the way over if you want to to make it a little bit bigger, longer of a nose. We're just going to do this a few times, though. There's two. And there's three. Kind of like line it up there, and then let's do yeah, let's do one more, and we'll just pull out from the very center. And we're gonna tweak it to make sure it's exactly the way we want it to look. Also, that's not too bad though. I kind of like that. I'm gonna use my needle to kind of like tweak that center over a little bit. But I think that looks pretty good. And then we're going to take these two black ends on the inside and we're just going to double knot them. Take this end, fold over, and we're just going to follow this knot all the way down to the bottom 
with your finger so that it goes all the way down so you don't have loose a loose nose and then knot it again and do the same thing just follow that knot all the way to the base and then we can cut our ends this is more obviously more yarn than we needed but that's okay we're going to keep this for sewing our uh or for stuffing our piece up with later on so we can just place this with the rest of our uh, tail ends right here okay so it's going to be how to make the face and if you want to tweak your nose anymore just use your needle to kind of like help tweak it into the position that you want but i actually really like that i think that's very 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 cute um, I'm sure my cat is going to be very excited to play with this later. Okay, so that's going to be the end of round uh, or or of adding the face. Now we can continue working into our piece, get our crochet hook in place, and we're on round ten. Okay, pull our loop a little tighter, and pull our stitch marker up. Let our our jute yarn float. We're gonna be changing to it again, but this is gonna be the last round that we're gonna be using our ecru yarn for. So for round 10, we're gonna start by doing an increase into the first stitch right here, just two single crochets into the same stitch using our off-white ecru yarn. And then two more single crochets, one and two. Sorry, that I, I don't want to pull through with our white here because we're going to change to jute now. But again, that's an increase into our first and then two single crochets. And then we can change colors. So we want our new, our, our jute yarn that's floating. We go over our piece like that. And then we're going to change over to our jute yarn, yarn over and pull through to change to our jute color. Then pull our loop a little tighter. And uh, now we can continue on round 10, all in jute. In fact, we won't need to change colors again until we get to the tail. So we're gonna use jute for the majority of the rest of this pattern. For the rest of this round, however, we're gonna do four single crochets in jute and then do an invisible decrease. For our first of our four single crochets, I'm gonna work around our ecru yarn and then we can cut it nice and close. We don't need it at all. We'll just let this go. And we're actually completely, I, I'm pretty sure we're completely done with our uh, ecru yarn. I don't think we need it at all anymore. So I'm just gonna place the entire ball to the side and continue on. Okay, so again, that is four single crochets um, in jute. So there's one, this is gonna be our second single crochet, here's our third single crochet and our fourth. So there's one, two, three, four in jute. And now we're going to do an invisible decrease in jute. So we're gonna go front loop only here and then the next front loop here and do a single crochet. Okay. Now uh, we wanna do six more single crochets in jute to get to the end of our round. One, two, three, four, five, and six. That's gonna be the end of round 10. Okay, and you should have 15 stitches around now at this point. You can see how our piece is coming together, our head's all done. Pull our stitch marker up, and we're just gonna keep working in using our jute yarn. Okay, so for round 11, we're just gonna do a single crochet into each stitch around all in our jute yarn, because um, that is our main color now for a while. So that's gonna be pretty easy. There should be 15 stitches around all in jute, and you just need to single crochet all the way around. So that's three, four, five, and six, seven, eight and nine. It's a perfect opportunity for you to count your stitches. Make sure that you're at the right stitch count. 10 and 11, and then 12, 
13, 14, and 15. There we go. It's going to be the end of round 11. Okay. For round 12, uh, we're going to do some increasing and decreasing to, to shape our piece a little bit. The decreases are going to be, should be at the top and the increases at the bottom. This is going to make your piece like kind of go down here and up here. So it'll kind of, we're kind of like doing this, trying to make it go down instead of out like that. Okay, we'll pull our stitch marker up. And for round 12, we're going to do a single crochet into our first stitch here. And then an increase into our next stitch right here. One and two into the same stitch. So one single crochet, one increase. Then we're going to do five more single crochets. One, two, three, four, and five. And then we're going to do an invisible decrease up here at the top. So that's going to go front loop and then front loop and then single crochet. And then we'll do six more single crochets to get to the end of this round, round 12. Just six single crochets. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay. That'll be the end of round 12. Pull our stitch marker up. And now we're on to round 13. And for round 13 and 14, that's two rounds in a row, two rounds, we're gonna do a single crochet in each stitch around. So that's pretty easy. Just two rounds of just single crochets all the way around, 15 stitches per round. And now I'm gonna tell you a little bit about Club Crochet. If you don't know, a Club Crochet is a subscription service for crocheters. Um, if you'd like to, consider becoming a Club Crochet member. Members get early access to future patterns, just like this one. Every pattern has a full video tutorial and PDF. They get access to the, um, the full library of patterns, so there are over 200 patterns now, and we add new ones every single week. Um, they also get monthly kits mailed to their door each month with any all the materials that you need to make whatever we're adding to the library that month. So this month's Club Crochet Library, or Club, Club Crochet Pro kits are going to be for one of these endangered creatures. And if you sign up for a membership this month, part of your membership will go to the World Wildlife Fund. So it's a really good opportunity for you to sign up for a new membership if you haven't already. Um, and yeah, pro kits, uh, our memberships start at only $5 a month. So it's a pretty reasonable uh, membership. And uh, you can even start with a free trial. So if you'd like to sign up, uh, now is your chance. And it's a great way to help uh, financially support our channel. Um, it is all supported by users like you. So if you'd like to help support, that'd be a great way to do so. And thank you again so much for watching this video. Okay, so I've just finished up round 14 there. We pull our stitch marker out now. And before we continue on to round 15, we just want to stuff up our piece just a little bit. Um, you don't need to stuff it too much because we're only stuffing the head here. go. Our black yarn's kind of gotten tangled up in our in our piece, so I'm going to go ahead and clean that up really quick because I don't know how it happened, but we've got a tangle going on. You never know, you know, it just sometimes, sometimes you just get tangled. There we go. Okay, so before I continue, I'm just going to use our stuffing here, and we're just going to stuff up the center of our head a little bit. Make sure that you get some stuffing on the opposite side of the eyes in the snout of our character or of our of our ferret here. I like using the back of my crochet hook to help stuff it in. You don't need to stuff it too much. That's probably good for now. We're going to stuff it again in a little bit. Okay. Get our yarn prepared. Stitch marker prepared and move on to round 15. For round 15, we're going to do four single crochets and then an increase repeated three times in a row. So that's four single crochets and then an increase repeated four times, uh, or three times rather, and that's gonna bring you up from 15 stitches to 18 stitches. So let's do our first repeat. That's gonna be four single crochets, one, two, three, 
two, three, four, and then our increase stitch right here. It's gonna be one and two. So there's our first repeat. We want three repeats total. So let's do another repeat, four single crochets. One, two, three, and four, and then our next increase, one and two. Okay, let's do our final repeat, four single crochets, get a little bit more yarn, one, two, three, four, and then our final increase right here, one and two into the same stitch for our increase. It's gonna be the end of round 15. You should have 18 stitches around now. We'll pull our stitch marker up. And now we're on to round 16. For round 16, a nice break. We're just gonna do a single crochet into every stitch around. So that's just gonna be 18 single crochets around to get to the end of this round. Nice and easy. Okay, and we're coming to the end of our round now. Just a few more stitches. One, two, and three. All right, and that's gonna be the end of round 16. We'll pull our stitch marker up. And now we're on to round 17. And round 17 is where we're gonna start adding our legs. Um, so we're gonna start by grabbing our front leg one of our front legs. Actually, we will need both of our front legs anyhow. And we're gonna sew, we're gonna crochet around these ends at the same time as we work around our piece to sew it on while we crochet. See, so we're gonna work both around these three stitches on the top of our piece and into the next three stitches on our piece simultaneously. Now, every stitch on the leg here is gonna be a single crochet, but um, every now and then we're gonna be working into both loops of the legs simultaneously. So you don't need to worry about doing increases or anything like that. It's all gonna be single crochets on these front legs, um, but you will need to you know, have them so they're, they're aligned correctly. Um, also, your front legs should be facing, so they have a little bit of an angle to them. See how they have just like a little bit of an angle upwards to the legs, those angle upwards should be pointing towards the sky, which means that it should be facing like this, not like this, okay? Because that would be facing downwards. So we want it to be facing up like that. And we're gonna start right away, get our stitch marker over and our yarn on the right side. And we're gonna start right away by working into the first leg. We're gonna line this up Ignore that last chain, but in those top three stitches, this one, this one, and this one, we're gonna work both into this stitch and into our first three stitches of our round simultaneously. So we're gonna work into both of those at the same time. One, two, three. So first off, I like to fold this, uh, this chain over while we go so we can hide this chain also. So we're gonna go into the neck, the first stitch on the leg, then into the first stitch on our body, yarn over with the end attached to the ball and pull it through. And then going over it, yarn over and pull through two. Or pull, yeah, you know, do finish up our single crochet. And I'm working around this chain stitch simultaneously to hide that end in. Okay, so there's our first stitch of our first leg. Here's our next one. We're gonna go into both loops of the next leg, then onto the st stitch on the body, pull through and pull through. There's two, and next stitch on the leg, next stitch on the body, pull through, over, pull through. Pull it tail nice and tight. That's gonna be the first leg sewn on. You can see how it's going to line up with the body there. And it will be a little loose. You know, it's gonna be able to be open like that. And we can sew it closed at the end of our piece if we wanna have it so it's like actually attached to the body more. Um, and I'll show you how we can do that. I don't really mind it that much. I think it's kind of fun that they're open. I don't know, it's just kind of, I don't know, I like it.
But we do have a note in the PDF, so if you want to not do it that way, you can. Okay, so that's our first leg on. Next, we're going to do three more single crochets to get to our next leg. So that's going to be into this next stitch here. And I am going to work around this uh, tail end just for one more stitch. And then I'm just going to stuff it into our body. So there's one single crochet, two, and three. And then we can line our next leg up. And again, we want it to be facing so that the, the angle of the foot is pointing up towards the ear, like that. And we're going to go through the first stitch on the leg, which is going to be right here. And then the first stitch, or the next stitch on the body, which is going to be right here. And then single crochet, pull through and pull through. So we're going to both of those at the same time. So there's one. Here's our next one, and then our next one on the body, two, and then our final one is going to be right here, and then right here on the body, it's going to be three. Okay, now we're going to work around this tail end while we do uh, the rest of our stitches for the body, and the rest of the stitches for round 17 are just going to be single crochets, that's going to be nine single crochets to get to the end of the round, so that's one, Two, I'm going to do four single crochets working around this tail end just to make sure it doesn't get loose. And then we're just going to hide that in the body. Okay, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. There we go. We have our First two front legs sewn on and added to our piece. You can see how, oh, it's so cute. I love how easy that is. It's so easy. So much easier than sewing something on. All right, so now I'm gonna pull our stitch marker up and continue in our piece. We're on round 18. For round 18, we're gonna do five single crochets and then an increase repeated three times around. So that's one, two, three, four, five single crochets, and then our increase right here. One and two. So it's five single crochets, then an increase repeated uh, three times total. So let's do our second repeat. Five single crochets, one, two, three, four, five. And then our increase right here, one and two into the same stitch. All right, one more repeat of that. One, two, three, four, five, and then our increase right here, one and two. And that's going to be the end of round 18. You should have 21 stitches now because we did three increases in that round, which brings us from 18 to 21. So now you have it just slightly bigger. Okay. We'll pull our stitch marker up and work on our next round. For our next round, round 19. In fact, for 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, and 24, that's going to be six rounds total. For six rounds in a row, you just want to do a single crochet all the way around. So that's pretty easy. There should be 21 single crochets per round. And we're just going to do six rounds in a row of all single crochet stitches. So it's not too crazy. Just six rounds of single crochets, 21 single crochets per round. And uh, yeah, that's it. It's kind of like a nice break, you know, just a nice segment where you can just chill out and keep crocheting around. Again, if you haven't yet, please like and subscribe down below. Make sure to follow uh, at Lemon Yarn Creations. She's the designer of this pattern. She's on Instagram, uh, and I think she's on Twitter, maybe? I'm not really sure. I know she does have an Etsy page as well. And then we also have an Instagram for Club Crochet, if you haven't followed it already. It's club at club.crochet, uh, and all of our designers for this uh, Earth Day Crochet Along all have Instagram pages. So go check us all out. 
Um, I will put links to uh, all of us, all of the designers on uh, clubcrochet.com slash Earth Day. I think that's where I'll put it, or Earth Day 2022. I'm not totally sure yet, but it'll, it'll be in one of those places. All right, I finished round 19. I'm going to keep crocheting around for the next uh, few rounds and get these get done to round 24 of our rounds, all of our single crochet rounds, and I'll be back once I'm done with those. So I'll be back in just a second. Okay, and that's going to be the end of round uh, 24 for me and our six rounds of single crochets. So I've finished six more rounds of single crochets, and uh, yeah, we're on round 25. Let's pull our stitch marker up here and continue on to round 25. For round 25, we're going to do five single crochets and then an invisible decrease repeated three times in a row. That's going to bring you down from 21 stitches back down to 18 stitches around. So it's kind of a nice way to bring us back down in our piece. We're going to start closing up our body now. So that's going to be five single crochets and then an invisible decrease repeated three times around. So let's start. One, two, three, four. There's five single crochets and then an invisible decrease. One, and that's two front loops, and then a single crochet. Okay, so that's one, two, three, four, five, invisible decrease. There's our end of our first repeat. Let's keep going around. Here's our second repeat. One, two, three, four, and five and then an invisible decrease. Front loop, front loop, single crochet. Okay, one more repeat. Five single crochets. One, two, three, four, and five, and then our invisible decrease. Front loop, front loop, single crochet. Okay. Now you should have 18 stitches around, and that'll be the end of round 25. All right, let's pull our stitch marker up. Now we're on to round 26. In round 26, we're going to need our back legs again, um, because in round 26, we're going to be attaching one of our back legs. It's actually going to be the one over here. And then in round 27, we're going to attach our second back leg over here. So um, we're going to be attaching the legs exactly how we attached these ones. However, there's going to be stitches in between the legs that have decreases and stuff like that. So there are some like really like tricky stitches as we go through this. So just take it one stitch at a time. Okay, so to start round 26, we're going to do eight single crochets and then we're going to add our first leg. So let's start with doing eight single crochets. One, two, three four, five, six, seven, and eight. Those are eight single crochets. Now we want to do a uh, single crochet. We're going to add our back leg. So first we're going to line it up. Now the back legs also have a bit of a shaping going to them, just like how the front legs did. So you can see this little bump kind of on the back here. That's going to be towards the ground like this. You don't want it sewn on. You don't want to sew it on like this because that would kind of be weird. Instead, we're going to sew it on like this so that's kind of facing up just a little bit. It's kind of got like an arc up a little. So first we want to line it up and we're going to go around or into the first of our three stitches on the end of the leg. We're going to skip this chain like how we did on our first leg. We're going to skip that chain here. We're going to start into this stitch and then this stitch, one, two, and three are going to be lined up with three single crochets on the side here. So let's start by going through the front or through our leg stitch and then through oops, we do want to have this tail end on the inside also. And then through the next stitch on our body, that's going to be right here, then yarn over, pull through both of those stitches at the same time. Make sure this tail end is folded over and then yarn over and pull through both for our first single crochet. There's one, then the next stitch on the leg, next stitch on the body. There's two, and then last stitch on the leg, last stitch on the body, three. So three single crochets in a row 
with this tail end worked around. That'll be the first, uh, first of the back legs sewn on. Next, we're gonna do a single crochet into the next stitch. It's gonna be right here. One single crochet into the next stitch. And then we wanna do an invisible decrease after that. So one single crochet, then an invisible decrease. So that's gonna be front loop, front loop, single crochet. And then we'll do another single crochet after that first invisible decrease. And then a second invisible decrease. So that's front loop, front loop, single crochet. Okay. And then finally, for our last stitch in round 26, we want to do one more single crochet into the last stitch right here. If you'd like to count your stitches around, you should have 16 stitches at the end of this round. We're going to pull our stitch marker up and continue on to round 27. For round 27, we're going to start off with an invisible decrease and then do a single crochet. And then we're going to uh, add our second, um, our, our second back leg. So that's going to be invisible decrease first. So that's front loop and then front loop and then a single crochet and then a regular single crochet after that invisible decrease. And now we want to do our second leg. And the same thing, we want it so that bump on the leg is pointing, pointing downwards. We don't want it on like this. We want it like this, so it's kind of angled up. We'll go through the next stitch on the leg, and then the next stitch on the body, and then yarn over, pull through both of those stitches at the same time, and then single crochet. So there's one, then the next stitch on the leg, next stitch on the body, two, one more, next stitch on the leg, and next stitch on the body, three. Okay, that's three single crochets. Now we're gonna work around this tail end uh, for the next few stitches so that we can keep it locked into place. Um, after doing that uh, to sew on the leg, we want two single crochets to finish up. So we'll just do two more single crochets, make sure you work around this tail end. And that's just gonna be one, and two, just like that. Okay, and that's actually gonna be the end of the round. We're gonna finish the round there, and we're gonna move the end of the round to this point. So what we can do now is we actually can take this, uh, our stitch marker here all the way out, and we can restart it over here. So let's, this is a good opportunity, just take our stitch marker out. And this, the reason we're ending the round here is just to help with clarity as we go around, because it can just be kind of confusing if you don't. Okay, so we're just pulling our stitch marker out. Try not to make it, try not to pull too tight or you might accidentally like open up stitches and I don't know, you just want to be careful with this. So we're just pulling the stitch marker completely out like that. Okay. I'm going to take this black yarn and just stuff it into our piece. And then we're going to place our stitch marker over the end here. And we're going to work around it for our next stitch. And that's going to be, um, yeah, the end of round 27. Okay, so for round 28, we're going to do three single crochets and then an invisible decrease repeated three times in a row. So we currently have 15 stitches around, but after this next round, we should go down to 12 stitches around. So that's going to be three single crochets worked around our, tail, our stitch marker for our first one there. There's one and two, three, and then an invisible decrease. That's going to be front loop front loop, single crochet. And there's our first repeat done. We want three of those repeats total. So let's do our second one. That's three single crochets. One, two, and three. And then our invisible decrease. So that's front loop, front loop, single crochet. There's our second repeat. Get our stitch marker up a little bit. and Actually, let's just stuff our piece with that end of our stitch marker too. And we have one more of those repeats, three single crochets, one, two, 
two, three, and then our front loops. Front loop, front loop, single crochet. All right, that's gonna be the end of round 28. Pull our stitch marker up. And before we continue on to our next round, we need to stuff this body full. Um, so we just need to grab our stuffing and just fully stuff up the body. Now this is way more stuffing than we're gonna need, but we're just gonna stuff up the body a lot at this point. One, that's just some. Let's go with another one. That's pretty good. You don't want to overstuff it. That's what I always say with amigurumi. It, there's a fine line between understuffing and overstuffing your amigurumi. If you stuff it too much, you'll start to see your stuffing through the stitches. If you stuff it too little, your piece will kind of morph in a strange way. It'll be very obvious if you understuff it as well. So you want it to be somewhere in between over and understuffing. And that actually, that's pretty good. You can see our ferret starting to come together. Okay. Keep working around, get your stitch marker back in there. And we're on to round 29. And this is gonna be technically the end of the body if you're following along in the written instructions. Okay, so for round 29, we're going to do an invisible decrease into each stitch all the way around. That's gonna be six invisible decreases total, which obviously is gonna decrease us from 12 stitches back down to six stitches. So we're gonna go into the front loops only we're gonna do an invisible decrease in each stitch. So let's do our first one. That's front loop, front loop, and then single crochet. There's our first invisible decrease. There's our second invisible decrease. And you can see how I'm holding my piece like this and pinching it, which helps me line up for the next front loop and front loop. Okay, just a few more. Front loop, front loop, single crochet. Okay, just a couple more here. Front loop, front loop, and a single crochet. Last stitch, front loop, front loop, and single crochet. All right, now you should have six single crochets all the way around. You can see the, it's very tiny there. And we can continue on to the tail, our last part of this pattern. We pull our stitch marker up and we can continue on to round 30. For round 30, we're actually gonna do something a little interesting. I, I haven't ever done this before, but it's really cool. It makes like the tail really stick up very straight. And I thought this was a really cool addition uh, from, from uh, from Lemon Yarn Creations. We're gonna do a slip stitch into all the stitches around. That's gonna be six stitches around, just a slip stitch. If you don't know what a slip stitch is, we're gonna go into the next stitch right here, go under both loops, yarn over, pull it through that loop, and then through the loop on the hook, like that. That's it. It's kind of like half of a single crochet. We're gonna do that all the way around into each stitch around. So there's one, here's our Second one, next stitch. Here's our third slip stitch. There's gonna be six. It's three, four, five, and then our last one right here, six. There you go, and you have a slip stitch all the way around. And that's gonna be the end of round 30. For round 31, we're gonna be working into the front loops only of all those slip stitches that we just made around, and we're gonna do a single crochet into all those front loops. So that's this stitch right here, okay? So if you're looking at the top of your stitch, this would be under both loops, but we only wanna work under the front loop. So we wanna do front loop only, six stitches in a row. I'm actually not gonna work around, well, yeah, fine. I, 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 ugh. all right, fine, we'll work around our stitch marker. <laughs> fighting with myself all right so that's going to be the front loop only that's going to be this front loop right here i'm going to help pry it open with my nail to get my stitch under there or crochet hook under there we're just going to do a single crochet so there's 
one. Then the next one right here, front loop only. There's two. Front loop only. Three. Four, couple more, front loop only, get a little bit more yarn, there's five, and then the last one is going to be right here, only into that front loop, if I can, that one's kind of hard, there we go, there is six. Okay, you see how that kind of like makes it like pop out a little bit. It's a really interesting technique. I've never really seen it done before, but I like it a lot. All right, and that's going to be the end of round 31. Now we can pull our stitch marker up and we're on to round 32. For round 32, we're going to do four single crochets. We can work under both loops again. So we can work under, here's our first stitch right there. We can work under both of them again and we can do, uh, yeah. And for round uh. Uh, 32, we're doing four single crochets and then an increase and then one single crochet to bring us up from six stitches to seven. So it's going to be first stitch right here, four single crochets. So there's one, two, three, and four, and then an increase right here. So that means two into the stitch after those four single crochets. So that's going to be one and two into that same stitch. And then one more single crochet at the end of this round right here to finish up round 32. Pull our stitch marker up. We're almost done. For our next uh, three rounds, that's going to be rounds 33, 34, and 35, three rounds in a row, we just want to do a single crochet into each stitch around. So nice and easy. Let's just do a single crochet into every stitch all the way around. One. Two. Three. Four. There should be seven per round, five, six, and seven. So that'll be round 33. And again, we want three rounds of that. So 34 and 35 will also all be single crochets around. Now, the one thing I will say is uh, before the end of round 35, we will change back, change to black for our last two rounds of our piece. So just keep that in mind. You want to change to black after doing these three rounds of single crochets. And again, uh, this is, I, I think, the third time I've asked. Uh, if you haven't yet, please consider liking and subscribing down below and following all of our designers on Instagram or whatever social media you use most. They probably use it as well. So check us, check us all out. And uh, yeah, make sure to like and subscribe. Okay, one. This is my round 35. At the end of this round, I'm going to pause for a second and grab our black yarn. Because we're going to change to black yarn after this. Just a few more stitches. Boom. And then the last stitch is going to be right here. All right, now before I finish that, I'm gonna grab our black yarn. We can change the black yarn now. Place it in between, fold it under, and then yarn over with black and pull it through the loops with black. Just like that. Pull our stitch marker up. We'll continue around. For round 36, it's another round of just single crochets around, but now we're working into our black, in black yarn. For our first stitch right here, Oops, right here, we can work around our jute yarn to keep it locked in. We'll pull our yarn a little tighter. There we go. There we go. Just for our first stitch, 
and then we can just cut it nice and close. We won't need that end. Okay, let's keep crocheting around. So that's seven single crochets in our black yarn. So there's one, two, two, three, four, five, two more. Got my tail ends here getting in my way. I'm actually just gonna go ahead and stuff those in with this stick just to keep it so I don't accidentally have any of those threads poking through. There's one and here's our last stitch right here, two. Okay, so that uh, now we're on to our last round, round 37. I'm actually not gonna work around this tail end because I like it on the outside so I can easily pull it out. Um, but for our last round here, Round 37, we want two single crochets and then an invisible decrease and then three single crochets, which is gonna bring you down from seven stitches back down to six stitches. And then after that, we can cut it, pull through and sew it closed. So let's do that. Two single crochets. There's one and two. And then an invisible decrease. So we're gonna go front loops only of the next two stitches. So there's front loop front loop, single crochet, and then three more single crochets to get to the end of this round under both loops. So there's one, two, and here's our last one, three. Okay. All right. To finish up our, uh, our guy here, we just need to Cut the yarn. You don't need to uh, do a slip stitch or anything like that. Just cut the yarn, leaving enough to sew it closed and pull it all the way through. And I'll show you how to sew this closed in a second. Um, before I do that though, let's pull our stitch marker out all the way. We can save it for another piece later or to stuff our piece up. Um, you don't have to stuff this tail up at all if you don't want to, it's not really a big deal. So we're just not going to. We're gonna take this tail end, thread it onto our needle and we're gonna sew this closed. Now to sew closed, all you have to do is go under the front loops only of all of the stitches around with your needle. So go through the front loop only of all these stitches. So there's one, two, should be six total, three, four, five, and six. And then we can just pull it really tight. I like to grab the end of where this end is coming out like that and just pull it tight. And it'll close that end up and then take the end, go straight through the center and then out somewhere on the outside, just in between a stitch like that. All the way through, pull it nice and tight and just cut it really close right there. Okay, and the last thing that you can do is you can sew these to the sides of your piece a little bit to keep the legs from like, like flaying out like that. I don't think you really need to. I think it looks really cute like this. Um, but if you want to, uh, I would use jute yarn, come out through the center here. You know what? Let's, I'll go ahead and do it. Just so if anybody really wants to, I can show them how really quick. So I'm just gonna cut a little bit of jute yarn off, thread it onto our needle. And this shouldn't be, oops, this shouldn't be too tricky. There we go, thread it onto our needle. I'm gonna go through the center between the two legs and then out through where we wanna sew the leg attached. I would not sew the leg attached at the very front. I would sew it on uh, a little bit back further, just so it doesn't like, I, I just think it'll look better like that. So throw it through the back there, come out through that stitch. Then we're gonna go through the side of one of these stitches, whatever stitch is lined up. So it looks like it's right here. So we went like this, would work. And then in through the body, through uh, either, you can either go through the same stitch you came out of or an adjacent stitch, either one would work. Um, let's go through an adjacent stitch and then go across to the other side and we'll do the same thing with this side. 
this. See, so that'll sew it a little bit to the body, a little closer to the body there. And then on the other side, we'll do the same thing. We'll find where it connects and go through a stitch, Let's go through this stitch and then out through there, like that. And then all you have to do is come out, go back in the body and come out through where this other tail end is, like that. And then just double knot these two on the inside and it'll keep those legs facing forwards. And you could do the same thing with the back loops as well. However, all you have to do is double knot these and then stuff it in. However, I don't really want to do that. So I'm just going to pull these out because I kind of like the fact that these legs are like loosey goosey. I think it looks very fun and silly. And honestly, it'll give my cat something to hold on to, <laughs> which is going to be funny. And it shouldn't, they shouldn't come apart um, because of how they're sewn in with the crochet. Okay. There we go. We got our crocheted ferret. And it feels like it's actual size too, which is really fun. Thank you so, so much for crocheting this black footed ferret along with me and supporting this fundraiser. If you haven't yet, please make sure to like and subscribe down below and check out the other patterns and designers in this year's Earth Day collection, especially this pattern's designer at Lemon Yarn Creations. Thanks again for watching. Pasta la pizza and happy hooking. Goodbye. So long and thanks for all the prairie dogs. Bye.